Hi guys, you're welcome to another episode of Android Programming. We'll be talking of how to synchronize SQLite data to my SQL database online. This is a reply to a request from one of my YouTube followers. He asks for how possible can he store a temporary data on an Android app when offline and I also have the ability to synchronize this data to a server uh, when internet gets back to the phone this application demo explains about how to achieve this tax the features of the app will include a user input text is saved to a local db which is the sqlite database and displayed to the ui a notification pops up for a need to synchronize the data in which multiple data can be passed into this particular UI at a time. After which, the user taps on the synchronize button to deliver those data on the MySQL database sitting on the live server. This tutorial will be broken down into two modules. Part one will be the PHP code for the backend integration of data, while the part two deals with the front end, which is the Android development using Java classes and SQLite database to retain the data and push them to the calling server PHP codes. So we'll be talking about the first model, which is uh, the back end, whereby we will be using PHP as the back end of this particular application. I'll be going to bracket IO where I have the source code of the PHP backend files. We'll be talking about the config.php the DB Connect, the DB Functions, Insert Users, and View Users PHP. In the config.php, we have to define the DB host, which is localhost. You must have the DB user. This is the DB user from my own particular server. Also, you need a DB password and the name of the database. You have to create this right um, in the server in which I use the live server. You can as well use a local host. So you can do that uh, from PHP my admin if you are using a local server, probably ZAMP or WAMP. But if you're using a live server, you go to the cPanel of the particular provider and you get to uh, create a database. After creating a database, you assign a user to a database. You know, after assigning the user, you give the user the necessary permissions you know, to use the, uh, the particular database. After doing that, you move to your PHP my admin, which is over here. So after moving to your PHP my admin, you create the user's table. Well, we have this users table with an idea of we are with some fields, just two fields. First field is the ID, the second field is the name. The ID is an integer data type with 11 length. And you can also add an auto increment to the ID. While the name is variable character with 100 length. So just two of it is okay for this particular application. Let's move back to bracket IO where we'll be talking about uh, the other files of this backend. Now let's get to look at the dbconnect.php. You create a class called dbconnect and we have a constructor to this class. Also you can as well create a destructor. Now we have a function called connect. Where you're going to require once the config.php, which is actually like the metadata of your backend server. Now you create a variable called con, and you call on the MS, the MySQL connect function, where you pass in the DB host, the DB user, and the DB password. These are the necessary uh, features. Well, you're going to select the database using the mysql select db so you have to know the database being uh, called and you return the connection because it would have connected based on the db 
the host, the user, and the password, which is going to pass into the connect variable. Now you also need to return this particular variable. Now you need to close your DB, which is the database connection, calling the MySQL close function. Let's get to look at the functions used in this particular backend server. We use the we have a class called the DB function where we create a private DB variable. Also, we have the constructor. Now we need to include ones, which is the DB connect PHP, which is actually uh, the PHP file that connects the database to the user based on the password. Now this particular class instantiating with a new db connect to connect up so this actually connects to the db that's the constructor the structure follows but it may not be actually be used because it's empty now you're going to store new user and return the user details calling we have a function called the store user which has two parameters the id and the user because these are all these are just the necessary fields in the MySQL database. So you need to insert the user into the database, calling the MySQL query, and you pass the, the, the result into a variable called the result. So what's the query like? Insert this is the SQL statement. Insert into users table based on the values gotten which is the ID and the user. This is actually going to be gotten from where? From the Android UI, which is going to be the XML, the input files, you know, the ID and the user. So it's actually inserted into the user's table. Now, an if statement follows. If the result return true, else, definitely there is an error somewhere which is actually going to trigger the error and uh, it's actually going to return false. So that is for the store user. Let's get to you look at the get all users. The query involved here is select all from users. So you want to select all data because it's an input and output kind of uh, data analysis. You input the data and you get the output. Now, in the course of the output, you select all, that select all data from the user's table and you pass it into the result variable and you return this result. You have to return this variable. So that ends the DB function. These are the necessary functions used. The store user, the get all users and the constructor, which is the DB functions itself. Let's get to look at the insert users PHP. You're going to include ones, the DB functions, because they are needed to connect up to the DB. And you're going to create an object. You know? Then we used to call it variable, but now this is OOP, object oriented programming. So you call it an object instead of a variable. So you've been instantiated with the new keyword DB functions. The same thing goes for the JSON. Now you have a JSON post. So you are posting it to the user's JSON. So we have to remove some slashes whereby you use the get magic code GPS. This is uh, the MySQL syntax. So you strip up splash, you strip up the slashes from the JSON data. So you decode to JSON because you need to encode it to JSON. This is what is being understood from the Android. Uh, you Android doesn't really understand PHP, but at least Android understood JSON files, XML files, which can be generated from a PHP file. Now you have the utility arrays to create the response JSON because it's actually going to come in array and you have to loop through. So that calls out for the loop which loop through an array and insert the data you know, from the JSON into the MySQL DB. This is actually inserting from the JSON. That's 
from what is gotten from the Android UI to the DB. So we have a counter variable of i. So if the i variable is less than the count, which is like the length of the data, it's going to add one to it, which is the iteration. So in the course of this iteration, there's going to be a store user into the DB, which is the MySQL DB. Now you call a store user, the data, the index, the user ID, the same thing goes for the data, the index, the username. So based on the insertion, you're going to create a JSON response. The rest, which is the value being passed into the user uh, ID and username. Now we have this index, the ID and the status. So we have for the ID and we have for the status if it's yes. We have the array push to push this. So else, you know, that the status will be no. So afterwards, you're going to post a JSON response back to the Android application, That's which is going to actually encode JSON. You know, passing the A variable. So that's the response back to uh, the Android application that probably there's a success in the insertion. Now let's look at the view users PHP. This is just like uh, a markup language, or uh, a markup structure rather. Well, we have the HTML, the head title, the view users. We have some styling for the body. We have the font, which is the normal mediums. We use sans serif as the font family. And you have a table where we have a border collapse, the width, 20 pixel margin left and right auto. This is for the row and for the column. We have the padding, 0.25. Text align center, the border, the border one pixel, that the solid color around it. We have for the end child, we have for the header, which is the row header, you give the background, and for the header itself, which is for the div header, we have the padding to give 10 pixel the background, the width and the color all set appropriately. We have for refresh, we have for no record. That close up the style sheet. Now we have a script here, which is JavaScript, to refresh the page. You know, so it's actually going to reload this as a refresh. You know, so it has a click, it refreshes the HTML response. So why refreshing the HTML response? There's always a call to the DB to get the files. So that's where the PHP comes in to play. Whereby you include the DB functions, the P. Now we have the DB object, but uh, where we have the new DB functions being called. We have the users variable. What about we get all users, which is from the DB functions? We have the users, the get all users right here. Can you see this function? What about we select all from the users? So we get to use this particular function and we pass this into the users variable. We check if the users is not equals to false in which the MySQL number rules will be called which actually going to check and get the rules data of the users. Now we pass this into the number of users. This is actually going to enable us to get the number of users based on the MySQL number rules. Else, the number of users will be initialized to zero. That closes the PHP tag. We have another PHP open right here, which checks for the number of zeros if it's greater than zero. That calls for the table where we have the the table rule with an ideal of header where we get to style it. I think I, we talked about that uh, at the top right there where we talk about the header over here, the TR header. Now we still maintain that. I would like to 
collapse this. Okay. Now we have the TD, which is for the row, with an ID. Another TD, which is the username. Now the PHP follows that's going to get the while loop. Coming pretty soon. Yeah, we have the while loop. Let's bring this back. The while loop, we get the MySQL fetch array. We have the MySQL fetch array where it's going to fetch the users. Uh, that's been passed. That's a while loop. From this uh, loop, it's going to be passed into the TR, which is the row. Now we have for the TD, which is the ID and the name. Now the row ID will be gotten, will be echoed. The same thing follows for the name. It's going to be echoed from this while loop that's fetch the array of the users. A closing TR, a closing, another PHP opening with a closing PHP tag. With a closing table, we have the PHP for the else that if this record, this particular fetch is not uh, gotten, it's going to call an F statement where it's going to say no records in the mysql db now we have for the refresh the php opening and closing tag now there's a refresh on the button click it's going to trigger the refresh page function so that's just it that's just the little analysis of how the few users php will actually see it so that actually gets uh, the data and populates it in the HTML markup language. So after all this has been done, you actually need to upload the config, the DB connect, the DB functions, the insert user and the view users PHP files to your server. Very, very important, which I've done right there because you're going to be pointing to the insert user PHP. So you can actually do it on the local server using XAMPP, but you have to get the IP address. So you actually have to do that. And if you're using a live server, that will be easy. The domain name will be straightforward to the link where you uploaded the PHP backend files of this particular application. Thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout this uh, backend tutorial. Don't go anywhere. We still have the second module, which is actually going to deal with the front end Android development using Java. So don't go anywhere. There's a bumper package, which is right compiled for you and for your learning. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.